Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Tuesday, March 15th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The spring game is in 32 days. The Notre Dame game in 172 days. The game against Michigan in 256 days. We are back to talking football today. The Buckeyes are still enjoying their week of spring break. But there are a ton of interesting storylines to explore still. So today we're going to be headed back to the offensive side of the ball to hear more from the always entertaining Kevin Wilson. As always, these clips are courtesy of the Ohio State University Athletics Department. The offense last season ranked among the very best in the nation in most statistical areas, actually. So where do they still have areas where they might be able to improve this year? We got some young receivers. They got to make, you know, we played at a high level. So it just because they've finished the season well that we continue that because that's been big. But I think the con- consistency of our running game. And our ability with the tight ends to complement that position, you know, we're losing Jeremy, so we're going to be a little bit, we're a little bit greener there. And, you know, if you don't, um, I see some guys, and not that these services have it, you know, statted out route, but I think a lot of people have Jeremy rated as the top, you know, three, four, five tight end in the draft. You guys say he doesn't catch the ball, watch him play the whole game. He's he's because when he's not there, you got to throw too much, or the quarterback's got to run. When we've had he and Luke and those guys here. So I think the tight end position, helping that line balance the run game that we can stay on schedule with just more nickel five and six and seven yard plays. And those are hard. You know, you start out the game, the box is loaded, you run for two and three. And sometimes maybe we can get a little impatient. Uh, you know, if we're going to be the best offense in the country, that means we, have, we win the games. And when you don't win the games, you can take those stats and say, look at your stats. Your offense is really good. But when you come up short a couple of times, you're not that good. And we need to be good enough. If to, so we're talking about being an offense that takes care of the ball, that has the toughness and physicalness that it needs, the ability to make the big play, but the ability to punch it in and drive down the field to be a, an elite offense. Right now we're a good stat offense, but to be an elite offense, we got to be a little bit more consistent, a little bit more better pad level, a little bit more running through trash at running back, tight ends playing stronger. We can be better, and that's going to be our goal as we build through spring in the summer preseason. Not that we're going to load it up because you got maybe the best quarterback going. You got a couple of dudes out there that really can make some plays. But when we're, when, when you can, when you, when you can put the physical presence with all that, you got a chance to, to, to be something neat. One of the real breakout stars last fall was wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. Through the course of the season, he broke a whole bunch of single game and season records for the Buckeyes. So now, how does he follow that up? How do you follow that up with another year where now he really is going to be the featured player? No more Chris Olave, no Garrett Wilson. He's going to be the first guy you would expect Chris uh, C.J. Stroud to be looking for on most plays. So if you know that and I know that, well, the teams on their schedule this fall know that too. So how do you prevent them from really trying to take him away? How do you prevent them from doubling him on every single play and saying, make someone else beat us? Uh, well, not from practice, but I mean, you can visualize. I mean, yeah, at the same time, if you're running the ball well and you're taking two guys to cover one, you got a chance to have some issues of now is the running game outgapped. So if you've ID'd it right, if you got two guys guarding one, well, that's basically the guy that's supposed to be guarding the quarterback that they never guard. So now we're back to even numbers. So if we can get in situations that you're getting brackets and he's one guy's taking two, now, from a blocking deal, there's not an extra guy, quote, in the box. How can there be an extra guy in the box? When the extra guy's in the box, they're playing him one-on-one. So you two guys are playing me. Well, instead of you playing the run and you playing me, when you guys are both guarding me, there's not an extra guy in the running game. So that, again, you know what I'm saying? So the running game will be a beneficiary, let alone the, the other targets, per se. And then, I mean, you know, end of the day, Coach Day and Coach Hart will do everything we can to figure out a way because that dude's got a way of getting open, too, so... We'll keep we ain't like we're just going to say, OK, you know, we'll, we'll we'll try to try our darnest. He's pretty good. One of the big themes during that first week of interviews for spring ball was leadership and really a lack of leadership on last year's team in some ways. And now that team was very, very young and they've got a bunch of starters coming back. Now you have a returning starting quarterback and that certainly helps in this department. But how did that lack of leadership really play out last year in, in Wilson's view? I noticed it in, in February, my first workouts with my position, that I thought we need, we, we were our attention to just number one, us doing our job at a high level. We were doing it good, but just, I just felt earlier, so, you know, the season I think went so late, you know, we're back at it, you know, you know, you're back at it in your early workouts, um, transitioning from off of COVID to in COVID. You got to be here every day when they're used to that. And just initially, I, I think I, I, you know, 
we didn't do maybe as a good a job as we needed to of getting our, our players in positions of setting the tone. I think Coach Dan, Coach Mick tried very hard this year to not them set the tone. Like say, I mean, at, going into the bowl game, there wasn't a player meeting. I kept telling you guys we were practicing good. There wasn't some meeting about, look, here's what we got to do. I think the guys knew. We didn't have a lot of meetings about let's develop leadership. We just tried to put them in place and say, hey, you're in charge of these guys. So if they're not doing well, that's on you and help them. And so I think Coach Mick and Coach Day did a nice job of putting those players in, in positions to teach them how to hold people to standards, how to communicate to them. We asked them to judge their group and grade their group certain times. So now I have an opinion of you. I didn't think you worked out very hard today. I thought you did a great job. I thought you were awesome. And not to take it personal, but be a leader, hold people accountable. Don't be a fake leader, be a real leader. And uh, I think um, short term, it's it's off to a great start. We'll see, again, the proof is in the puddings when the bullets are flying, the games are going on, it's loud. And okay, you know, we got to make a stop. You know, we got to get a first down. We got to get a touchdown. You know, we got to get a two minute drive. That's when you like to see all those things, not, not just so we're, we got our toes behind the line for a, for a drill. We're onside when it's fourth and one critical and you can't hear at certain places we play. It's going to be really loud and everybody can function. We can make a critical play and we can win another championship. One of the other guys back for a second season as a starter is Travion Henderson. He obviously, that's a good start. But they know they're going to need more depth to make it through the season. And really, they only have two more healthy scholarship running backs this spring. They've got Henderson, they got Mayan Williams, and they got Evan Pryor. Those are your three scholarship running backs that are healthy this spring. So how are Williams and Pryor looking so far? It's really good. I will say, too, though, I really like, you know, Mayan's always done pretty consistent. I think Evan uh, Pryor's coming on, and there's going to be some good competition there, too, which I think you always need more than one. I think with the volume of plays that we play at receiver, tight end, and running back, you need to be two pushing three deep, two and a half to three deep to get through the season and get through you know key games and not to to milk out a game uh, because you beat someone bad, but all of a sudden it's a critical game, and you need a second or third guy that can play championship football. So I like the way the back room's running or looking through the workouts we just started. I don't think we'll know more until – week three, week four of how we start playing with pads on and their ability. Because staying on schedule sometimes is that three-yard play is five. And sometimes that's the running back, the ability to, to not look for the big play. I, I had a chance, my original coaching mentor was Randy Walker in Miami, and he was a tremendous running back. I saw Bobby Carpenter. He played with, with, with his dad, Rob, was his tailback, Randy's fullback. And Randy always coached running back saying, there's not a lot of dollar bills laid on the ground, but you can find some nickels. And you just take a nickel, take a nickel, take a nickel, you'll get your dollar. If you stick it and you stick it and you trust the read, the big plays will come. It's like baseball. There's a lot of singles. If you're looking for home runs, you're going to strike out a lot. So I think as a young player, you start looking to make big plays as a runner. If you just trust the read, trust your talent and run, big plays will happen. I think the more he plays, the more you'll see big things out of him, Evan and mine and the whole crowd there. Last year, G. Scott Jr. moved from wide receiver to tight end. Now, he needed to grow a little bit to be able to play tight end at the Big Ten level. But now that he's put some of that weight on, what is that looking like in his second season as a tight end? It gotten into the 230s, which is good. Um, just watching some tape with the rec um, a recruit I had near of practice day. I mean, some of his fundamentals are in our best blocking positions. Still learning it. Still learning it. I uh, did some really nice things today on the field. I think consistency. You know, for him, do it again, do it again, do it again, because time on task. I think to be really good, sometimes it takes two years. He's getting ready to go into his second year of tight end. So I think he's still maybe away from because, again, I do think he has a pretty good ceiling now. He's not going to be a 255-pound kid. But I think we can get him to upper 230s, pushing 40. He can handle some of the blocking. He does have good receiving skill set. Guy that we can play. Mitch Rossi. Tight end, but a fullback. G, a tight end, but a receiver spot. And move those guys around and let Coach Day and Coach Hartline come up with matchups as we put the pass game together. So uh, a really good winner, uh, not just because he gained weight, but really good winner. Looking for him to have a consistent spring, come back with the summer, consistent fall. I, he's going to be in the mix to be one of the two or three guys that should play a fair amount. He's off to a good start. You mentioned G. Scott Jr. earlier. But, you know, tight end, is a, that's a pretty wide open position going into this year. No more Jeremy Rucker. So Joe Royer is probably one of the front runners there this year. But, you know, how do all of the different guys, all the different possible pieces that they have there at tight end, how do they all fit together in the various things that they're going to be asking the tight ends to do? Well, Joe, Joe's done well now. I think Joe's kind of on that verge of two years. And 
you know, he's kind of knocking on the door. It's kind of nice to see if he can swing through. And, and between he and GB are two kind of primary Y flex guys. Um, Sam Hart, a little bit of a bigger guy that flexes, but more of an inline player. And then Bennett Christian that we signed early. And, uh, he had a little ankle injury right when he got here that he's now practicing, but he'll be full go after spring break. So those two guys will be like kind of the big guys. And then we got uh, uh, little Herb Street out there playing a little fullback with Patrick Gerd and and with Mitch. We got a couple three guys we call them the the H back fullback. We got guys like G and Joe that could be H back split out guys, and we got guys like Bennett and we got guys like um, Sam that are Y guys that we could flex out. So we got about six. Um, it'll be interesting. We'll play to the strength. I think last year's the best year since I've been here. We played to Mitch Rossi's strength. We played to Cade Stover's strength, strengths. And I think we'll keep doing that with these guys, but I think we, we need to go through some padded practice to see what they, but the better, not because I coach them. I'm just telling you, the better the tight end position does, the greater the offense can be because we take stress off the O line. We take stress off the run game. We take stress off the quarterback. And when we're not there, and it's four wide, and they know you're throwing teeing off your rush, or they know the quarterback's got to run or RPO, you're much easier to defend. So as that tight end fullback position can be a quality high-end contributor, this offense has a really great chance. So we got inexperience at tight end right now, and they've had a nice winter, but they're going to need to have a great spring, great summer, and great preseason because I think as that group goes, we're really determined at the end. A lot of guys will get more credit. But their ability to do their job will make us complete or will knock on the door. We have seen the Buckeyes offense running with 12 personnel a bunch in the past. And just to define terms here for a minute, 12 personnel, the number is the number of running backs that you have on the field and the number of tight ends on the field. So 12 personnel is you got one running back and you got two tight ends. And that means the other skill guys out there are your two wide receivers. If there's 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end and three wide receivers. So there was a question about. What, what's the what's the breakdown going to be this year? Are we going to see more twelve personnel this season from the Buckeyes? If you played two tight ends, but they got to be playing well because you know you're taking Marvin off the field, you're taking Emek off the field, you're taking Julian off the field. So, but if you play two tight ends, that's a great chance to get him outside. That's all we, well, we've always done that when we went twelve. Who's the next two guys? So that's always an easy way to get Jackson outside for playing twelve. But we're going to play twelve when twelve's good. If twelve's not good, we're in eleven. If eleven's not good, we're in ten. You know, the more we can get some 11 and 12, I think the better our team is. So that's a chance to get him. I think right now, I think I, we really like the way Jaden Ballard's come on. He's had a nice offseason. He's knocking on doors, starting to show flashes. we got some young players. Um, I think we stay initially with Jackson inside. He played a couple plays today outside. It's not stressful for him mentally or physically to do. I think we just start there and see where it goes and trust Coach Hart and Coach Day and if there's a lot of 12, you see him outside more. If there's not a lot of 12, he's probably inside most of the time. But there's been a lot of times, I don't know if you noticed this, but we'll take the, the, the inside player and just put him outside. And maybe we'll leave him, we'll motion him back in. I mean, those, those guys move around, and Hart teaches them basically concepts so they all can play multiple spots. It's not very hard. It seems like every offseason there is some kind of job shuffle or title creep going on on that offensive side of the ball. There are some new titles this year. Brian Hartline is the passing game coordinator. Tony Alford is the run game coordinator. Justin Fry is the associate head coach for the offense. Wilson, of course, is the offensive coordinator. So what is it like having so many different voices with those kinds of fancy titles in the room all at the same time? I mean, I, at the end of the day, I think we got um, more than anything. Um, I asked a couple of young coaches. Like, and they said, it, it goes, it's just interesting listening to everybody talk. You know, because it's just, you know, what do you see? I mean, I always saw football is a little bit, say, like if you're over in, in again, yeah, no, we got some things going over in that European area that's not of, you know, kind of struggling with some countries, but just when you go, you didn't travel far, but it was a different language where you see things differently. Well, football is like that. I see things differently than Justin, although we're similar because we kind of have line guys. You know, Ryan sees things different than me. He's a quarterback. You know, Hart sees things from a receiver per se. You know, Tony has a running back. You know, and so Corey is a, is a quarterback guy. And so today, like we're doing center quarterback, and I made a comment to Corey after we did center quarterback. I said, hey, make sure you get a check count in next time because the, the, the center needs to hear that just to help him. Because we all just so there's a lot of great communication. The key is at the end, we're all on the same page. 
And here's what we want to try to emphasize and do. So we had a, we've always had a pretty good group. When I, when I came here with Coach Day, we were charged with Coach Meyer to, to make sure our group was cohesive and work together. And we've been a very good offense the five years that me and Coach Day have been here. And our, I think our key is we've worked hard to work together and to figure out how things that we can block, things the quarterback can do, the routes we like, how to put together and score points. But we've always worked together. It's not been about your play, my play. It's what do we do? How do we do it? How do we work together? And our group right now is doing that as good as we've done. And we've done it, I think, very well for five things. One, we have great players. But I think our ability to work together, prepare together, put them in good the way we practice, the way we teach, has been very solid. And I think right now maybe it's, it's, it's as good as it's been. And I think it's just a credit to we got a bunch of titles and all those things, I guess. But at the end of the day, we got good coaches, and when our job is to collectively work together to put a great product that our that our players and most importantly our fans deserve, and that's what we're doing. Wilson was also asked about some of the younger guys on the team who have really stood out on offense as people who have taken big jumps during this off season. Now he's going to start his answer talking about Evan Pryor, but kind of go from there. I'd say very much what we're talking about: G consistency. Okay, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't even need it any better. Just do it again. Just do it again. Just keep stacking up a day. Take those workout days. Now do an inside drill. Okay, you just ran the cones and you just hit the hit the weights. Now stick that inside zone play just like you, you're out here running around cones. Okay, now people are in the way. It's a play. But play with that confidence. So let's let's just see him play. And so I had a tremendous offseason. He and Jaden Ballard had for young guys had great off seasons. Jacob James, great off season. That's what young players need to do to, to become players that we need to help us out and looking forward to see what those guys can do. So if he just can, will stay healthy, stay consistent, he's got a chance to have a nice big role with the offense this year. Well, again, I hope you guys enjoyed that show. We always get good feedback on these shows where we, we play clips from interviews and it's always good to hear directly from these guys. And you know, the, the, sometimes there's stuff that maybe doesn't translate when we talk about it. You get it straight from the horse's mouth. You get the uh, you get the straight scoop from them. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Kevin Wilson is always one of my favorite interview subjects. So he's uh, always got always got some interesting stuff to say and uh, an interesting way to say it. So that'll uh, do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.